we will have more conflict in the future. Our choice is whether we will try to deal with those conflicts violently or nonviolently. Or as Martin Luther King uh, said, our choice is between nonviolence and non-existence. There are now 42 organizations in the world in 24 areas that are doing some form of unarmed civilian protection. And we don't know each other. We haven't communicated with each other. No one set out to organize these organizations. They are emerging because the time is right. When we're done with that process, we will have quite a list of good practices that we can distill into what is really the fine work. Then we will convene people for the first ever international conference for people doing unarmed civilian protection, where we can do our final validation, where we can build a network of practice. We use this evidence and these good practices to scale up unarmed civilian protection. What we found is that unarmed civilian protectors can do things that armed civilian, uh, armed peacekeepers can't do and vice versa. We've also found that unarmed civilian protectors can do almost all the tasks that armed peacekeepers are deployed with. Therefore, it makes sense that we do this the most effective way, the way that will build and sustain peace, which is to do this nonviolently. And so our advocacy goal is to bring this to a parity with armed peacekeeping. We need to really honor this work for what it is and to make sure that it gets maybe half as much money as armed peacekeeping which would put us in the $3 billion range. Uh, and that the consideration and that the political backing of it is at least equivalent so that people really shift to the first response is how do we solve this project problem and protect civilians nonviolently. So that's what we're doing.